explosive new film, Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost, exposes secrets behind the government's takedown of General Michael Flynn. Flynn knew what the intel world had been up to. He ordered the first audit of the use of contractors. This set off alarm bells. He told the truth. He was the most dangerous person for Donald Trump to hire. They had to get rid of Flynn. Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost. Available now. Watch it today. Go to SalemNow.com. SalemNow.com. Good morning and welcome to Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Thursday, the 25th of April, 2024. The year of chaos, and there is chaos in the markets today. I know we got the NFL draft. It's all started, right, everybody? This is the one time of the year everyone gets a little excited because, man, if we could just get the right pick, right, we, we, our team could be better. You know, well, guess what? Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks. And if uh, the Cardinals, I'll just say this, the Cardinals better not trade the pick. You draft Marvin Harrison and uh, Denver. Yeah, I don't know who's going to play quarterback for you guys. You're in trouble. But have, having said all that, now that we've covered the sports, horrible Horrible news. It started late yesterday. Another terrible auction for the United States, followed by terrible earnings out of Meta, a.k.a. Facebook, followed by this morning uh, with a GDP print well below expectation. And, and, well, here's a shock. Ready? Ready for the shock? Because, you know, they've been watching the data. Yeah, red hot inflation uh, has the markets down. I mean, the Dow's down uh, between six and seven hundred points this morning. The Nasdaq's down three hundred. The S and P's down seventy. Gold's up. Silver's up. Yeah, you shouldn't be surprised. The ten-year note right now four seven one. Four seven one. It's been four seven. Remember four seven five. Uh, I forget who was it. Uh, was it Morgan Stanley? Maybe uh, maybe it was J P Morgan. But one of the biggers warned. Right, we're in this critical area when we're you know four six five. That above four seven five, there was going to be big problems in the banking industry. Big problems. In the, in the bond market industry, and Jason, we're getting awfully close to it this morning. As like I said, kind of a, kind of a triple whammy. Uh, we had that record five year auction yesterday. It didn't go well. Uh, shouldn't, I, you know, should we be surprised? There's too many dollars, too much debt, not enough people wanting to buy for this low of a rate. Then one of the, another one of the magnificent seven, right? Already Tesla on the back foot. Now Facebook, aka Meta, uh, they're taking it on the channel. I think their stock's down 12, 13% this morning. And then you get a GDP number, even with inflation, right? I mean, GDP should be big time with, with, with inflation running, uh, 1.6%, well below expectations. And then, of course, all the inflation numbers inside of that GDP report, Jason, much hotter than expected. Matter of fact, you know, one of their favorite numbers was almost 4%. So essentially, inflation double what they promised us it was going to be on top of, you know, you got almost 4% inflation, but only growth of 1.6%. That's really kind of, in a weird way, it's negative growth. Yeah, and inflation does that, doesn't it? It makes, it, you know, it makes you see you have to look at the numbers a little differently. You know, just because your asset goes up, does that mean it's actually more valuable? And uh, so, yeah, Joe, it's uh, just keep watching the inflation. That's really, I mean, that's what this whole thing's all about. It's all about the inflation now. I mean, when they had their comfortable little 2% inflation, which is robbing us 2% every year for 15 years after the economic chaos of 08, Everyone just seemed happy with that, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah, this is great. We'll just keep on kicking the can down the road. Well, 
you know, at some point the, the can ends up against a brick wall or something, right? And you can't kick it down the road anymore, and you got to find a new game, right, Joe? And that's, I think that's what we're looking at. They're going to change the way we do things, and that anytime there's an economic change, it becomes very painful. 800-951-0592. That is our toll-free number. Uh, wait around time is over. Uh, it's starting to become very, very clear that we are not, uh, inflation did not get fixed. It's not going to get fixed. They don't want it to be fixed. Why do I say they don't want it? Well, if they want to fix it, you raise rates. I mean, it's simple. It's not that, it's, you know what, it's not even hard. But guess what? No matter how much they try, because I'm going to tell you right now, uh, what's going on in the bond market today I promise you at the next Fed meeting, quantitative tightening, they're winding that thing down. ASAP, right? Because they can't handle it. The stress on the banks, the stress in, in real estate markets, I mean, home sales. I mean, who's going to be able to buy a home? I, I hate, you know, let's not kid ourselves. You know, Jamie Dimon, he's no idiot when he's out there selling his own shares of his own company for the first time in his whole life. There's a problem. And remember what he said. I, I, I don't want this to be true. Jason, I have a hard time believing it could happen just because uh, my mind can't deal with it. But he was talking about rates above eight. And I'm not talking about mortgage rates, right? I know. I'm talking about 10-year note rates above 8%. He's saying that's how bad inflation could possibly get. Remember, warned yesterday about 1970s, and today's GDP number, man, it screams 1970. By the way, the miss, 1.6%. That was lower than any uh, Wall Street estimates. The lowest estimate was 1.7. The vast majority of estimates were close to 3%. And then, of course, to make it worse, all the inflation numbers were well above. When we get back, man, we've got so much to talk about. Hey, guess what? Jobless claims. Guess what? Yeah, remember that 210? Yeah, stay with that. Yeah, no, nobody's getting fired, by the way. Pick the Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News, our Joe and Jason here. A quick look in at the markets. Uh, the Dow's down 650 points. Uh, the Nasdaq's down 65 right now. I'm sorry, the S&P's down 65. The Nasdaq's down 260. The 10-year note. Four seven one, uh, getting ready to take out. You know, we had a, a a moment there late last year where where rates got up into this level. We're getting ready to take all of those out. Remember, four seven five uh, becomes the danger zone. They're, they're worried that it, it crosses four seven five because you know computers kick in, all this stuff kicked in. That you're going to see a 10-year note go right to 5%. Uh, that's not a great thing. Uh, gold right now is up 7, uh, uh, 23.32 right now on gold. Silver uh, up as well, 27.35 uh, right now. We're watching the Japanese yen. 155.54, uh, you know, kind of. Right now, waiting, it, when is the J- uh, Bank of Japan going to intervene? And it's a problem, right? Because guess what? They intervene. How do they intervene? Well, they intervene by selling treasuries, which means there's more out there, which means what? Rates go even higher. We'll have to keep uh, an eye out for that because this is above the level. Uh, the yen hasn't been this low since 1990s. We're getting ready to see the, the yen go to the lowest levels going back into the 80s. And, of course, really, is the yen worth anything? That's kind of the thing, right? Is it really mm-hmm. worth anything? I think that's the biggest problem facing uh, the yen. But when you look at things like today, we had jobless claims. By the way, 207. Sure. Right? Just go 210. I've never seen anything like it. This is like 12 weeks in a row where it's essentially the same number. Nobody believes it, but fine, whatever. Uh, when we look at, how about this? Whirlpool. 
We're cutting a thousand jobs. Why? Well, because nobody's buying washers and dryers because, well, they're super expensive. That's something, right? People get shocked on that. <laughs> How often do you buy like a washer, a dryer, a refrigerator, a dish, right? Not very often. Man, wow, are those things gotten expensive. Uh, Sun Power Solar, they're cutting a thousand jobs as well today. Uh, same, same kind of problems, but when we look at other things out there, the World Economic Forum, 98% now of central banks are adopting a central bank digital currency. Guys, it's, it's coming. The next crash is going to bring the central bank digital currency. You better have your gold. You better have your silver. You better start getting diversified from Wall Street. I'll tell you that right now. Where do you think Wall Street's going to be? You really think uh, Wall Street's, you know, uh, going to go up with a 10-year note at 8%? Pro no. Now, it could go up if the Fed's cut rates, right? Uh, but the data says that they're not. We think it's going to be inflation. Normally, we would say, hey, the Dow could go up more. Because there is, you know, if, if, if there's going to be inflation, usually it'll go up with inflation. But the problem for, for the debt markets is... There's so much debt out there, these higher rates actually bring it to its knees. And this is what you're seeing today. I keep telling you, have yourself diversified. you got to have gold. you got to have it. You know you need to have it. But now I'm telling you, you better be diversified in your, in your stocks and bonds holdings. Check out our friends at Y Refi. Not everyone's you know, not everyone's eligible. We know that you got to have at least fifty thousand dollars to invest, but you can get ten and a quarter percent fixed rates of return. No matter what Wall Street does, doesn't matter. It's kind of like you got another bucket that says, "Hey, this this stuff. I know what it's going to be every single month. You can use it as income. You can turn your income on. You can turn it off. All right? There's no fees. They don't play games. They're a great company." Check them out, investyrefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R-E-F-Y.com. Or just call them at 888-Y-REFI-24. By the way, a big thing happening. J.P. Morgan has almost $400 billion in Russian assets. Really, let's call it what it is, deposits in their bank that they've, they've got sitting in an escrow account. There's a big, I guess, global court case now. Russia has filed uh, to seize the $400 billion, I think $394 uh, billion, but we'll call it $400 billion. J.P. Morgan is saying this will cause irreparable harm to our bank because, Jason, we know, listen, you, you lose $390 billion worth of deposits, you're going to have a problem, right? I don't care what bank you are. So kind of, you know, J.P. Morgan, you know, it's we're sanctioning Russia. Russia saying, you know what, you need to turn them over. I, I don't even know how that would end. Uh, what, is there a global court now? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I, that's uh, it's, it's a quandary, isn't it? <laughs> what... what uh... I guess. All right, I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. There. 440 million. I said I was saying billion. That's kind of outrageous. Oh, okay. 440 well, million. Well, I guess what? Well, yeah, I guess you shouldn't make a big deal about that. That's not enough money to to really make a difference. Well, according, to JP, <laughs> according to JP Morgan, it is right. Whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, hey. No, I get it. No, I get. It. I know what I mean. I mean, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I'm just thinking, hey, how valuable is that? You know, and so these are all. Uh, is, this, is this in dollars, Joe? Is that what I'm hearing? Is it? You know, they're not in rubles, are they? I don't, you know what, that's a great question. I would probably say not. Uh, J.P. Morgan said it faced certain and irreparable harm from the efforts exposed to a nearly half a billion dollar loss, uh, according to J.P. Morgan, if, if that was to happen. I mean, how much does, how much does the average citizen lose when uh, when the stock markets are crashing after the banks, you know, corruptly just 
tank the NBS is you know the mortgage backed securities in 08. It was way more than 440 million, <laughs> Joe, right? But there's there's nothing to worry about there. But I get I guess country to country, I guess this becomes more of an emergency. But uh, you know it's uh, it's interesting. It, it's just, I think it must depend on who's actually losing the money. How about that? Whose deposits are they really? Maybe that's what right. it is. Maybe maybe that's toes, what it maybe. is. Yeah, so we'll see uh, how that plays out. If we get more news, I will keep you posted. Uh, but inside this GDP report, some really interesting numbers. Because when I first saw it hit the headlines this morning, right, 1.6%, I went, oh, my gosh, Dow's probably going to be up 500 points, right? The 10-year note is probably going to go below 4.6. That, that's what I was thinking when I saw the headline. And then next thing you know, I start getting these, you know, the, 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 the news right now is down three. Futures are down 300. Futures are down 400. Futures are down 500. I'm like, what is going on? And then you, I saw the 10-year note. It got to the highest I saw it was, was 4.73 and change. So almost 4.74. And it was because of what happened inside of the report. The GDP deflator came in at 3.1. Now, of course, it's got the word deflator in it. So this is, this is again, this is what I call, right, the inflation for homeless people. Why, why was that so bad? That's not that bad, 3.1. Well, guess what it was in the fourth quarter? 1.6. Whoops. Wait a minute. You're telling me inflation doubled? Yeah. Homeless person inflation doubled. Worse. The core PCE went from three, uh, went from 2% to 3.7%. So that one. Also almost doubled. And Jason, this is what's causing the problems in the markets now. Because remember, we're supposed to get this soft landing magically. Inflation was going to go away. And the fact that they've been looking at the data. They've been looking at the data. What have they been looking at? Because let's say, you think they just got this data today? No, we just got this data today. Right? This is data from January, February, and March. And they've been out there talking their heads off about, oh, don't worry, you know, we're, we're, we're not that, we're, we're in no rush to lower rates, but we're still going to lower them. I, I think this blows this out of the, I, I don't know. I don't know that they can do it, Jason. I really don't. These numbers, essentially what the, what these numbers said is inflation doubled from the fourth quarter of 2023 to the first quarter of 2024, which just tells you, listen, here's what really happened. They got gas prices to go down, oil prices to go down for a little bit. They, they, they got some feel good data to make them feel good so, so they could say, see, look at, look at, look at, we, we, we did, we were so good. We, we waited and, and that's the right thing. No, once again, this guy's a clown. He's a clown. When are you guys going to wake up? This is deliberate, or this guy is a total clown. Jay Powell's a total idiot, or they're doing it on purpose. And I don't think Jay Powell's a total idiot. That, that's just my personal opinion, Jason. I think the whole thing is is measured and weighed, and uh, and it's deliberate. You know, I, you know, the the market makers can win in a good market and win in a bad market. There's, you know, they they can win both ways. So I. Uh, let's just look at the short-term history. Wasn't it just December they were saying six or seven rate reductions? I mean, look how that evaporated to maybe now zero. Oh, my gosh. I forgot all about that. Right, Remember, One guy had had one. One guy had six. And everybody else said three. Uh, yeah, these guys, they can't find their backside with both hands. I mean, they, they, right? I mean, either that or they are deliberately just – putting fake numbers down, which is, I think, what they're doing. I think they're, they're, they're either lying to themselves, they're definitely lying to us. But, Jason, I think with the World Economic Forum jumping up and down, high-fiving each other today, 98% of the world is ready for a digital currency. It tells you all you need to know. Yeah, a lot of currencies are, are not doing too well, and so... 
Oh, how do you, let's just, just go with the logic of it. If you're, if all these currencies are bad, and they all are, it's all about, it's, it's always about just kick this system down the road. How can we get it to last a little longer, last a little longer? You know, I think they think they can kick it down the, the road uh, for infinity, but having a digital currency in place, uh, taking currency out of circulation, then gives you control over how the money is created, how it is spent, how it is taken out of the system. And uh, that that joke, I mean, if you look at it, it can make things be bad longer, you know, a lower standard of living for longer, and uh, they can make sure that uh, if they give out a bunch of money like they did in 2020, over the next, you know, false emergency that's that's coming, that next false emergency, it's coming. Whatever it is, it's going to be big and it's coming. Well, they're going to tell you, okay, here's the money. But this time, you can't put it here and you can't put it there, and you got to remember maybe time limits and all that stuff we've talked about in the past show. Yeah, it's it's something where, uh, well, let me give you another example. Joe Biden saying we need to take the capital gains tax rate to forty six point, or I'm sorry, forty four point six percent. On the top marginal rate for long-term capital gains and it, tax increases, I think it's a certainty. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, the, the, there's a big report on CNBC today talking about the, the, the country's largest cities and how much trouble they're in. Fitch out with a huge warning today uh, about New York City getting ready to lower its debt rating. Boeing today, they got their debt lowered to one grade above junk for Boeing. It just is something where I think, Jason, we're starting to see all of these things that COVID money hid. It's all coming all at the worst time. Houston, New York, L.A., Chicago, Portland, the list keeps growing, all getting ready for downgrades, according to Fitch. 800-951-0592, Joe and Jason here on this Thursday. Uh, gold's up 10, 23, 35. Uh, silver's up as well, uh, 2740 as the Dow is down, uh, 620 points and it's right here. We're, when is this going to break? Uh, the 10 year note, uh, like I said, we had every day's a record. Record this, record that. Uh, the amount of debt, every auction from one month to the next, it's like an extra $3 billion, uh, it, it, on almost every auction. And we do 20-some auctions a month. I mean, it's, it's incredible how fast these numbers are going up. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, according to Fitch, cities in America now may not be able to sell enough debt, because that's what they've been doing, right? They'll, they'll sell, okay, well, we don't have money, we'll, we'll, we'll raise, we'll just sell debt. Fitch is saying that these cities may be forced into actually having to cut services, cut schools, cut police, cut, 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 because their credit ratings are so bad that they may not actually be able to borrow enough money. This is what is happening, and, and look at, for us here in the U.S., that's kind of, it's not, we're not there with the treasuries. I don't want to overstate it, but it, it's, it keeps getting worse. These bid to covers keep getting worse. Right? And what does that mean? That just means not only do we have to sell record amounts, less people are actually even putting in bids. And now we have to work with Japan and South Korea because, hey, listen, you guys can't just do what you want. Because, boy, when you do it at the wrong time, who knows, the, the, the 10-year yield could, could really take off. Right? So they got to coordinate everything. I think you're going to see, you know, we said August is the next big move. We may move again just because I think as this drags out, Jason, 
we we are going to see, I think, an ultra aggressive Fed in reduction of quantitative tightening. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a 50 percent reduction almost from the get go because they've got to take some pressure off of the Treasury market right now. That's quite the job, too, right? That's going to take some doing. Um, you know, we talk about the reverse repo market. It, uh, was, it should have been out already, but uh, I was looking, Joe. It seems that, uh, well, you know, the government has a little more revenue coming in because of tax season. It kind of slowed down the final drain. And uh, I think the final drain of the repo market's happening right now. And so, so some of this market volatility might be, okay, that cash is almost gone. It's almost done. And uh, you know the government wants to keep spending, Joe. It's, you know, gotta, you know what, what's gonna, what's, how, how badly is it going to break when it breaks? You know, and then I don't think it's going to go away. I see markets as you know is is they're going to keep on going, but uh, it's kind of that kind of that the idea is you know if, if you don't actually believe the world is coming to an end, well then how are you going to finance the rest of your life, right? If the world's not ending tomorrow or next week or next month. Then you got to figure out how to finance things. There's going to be something in place, right, Joe? There's going to be some financial system in place, and you bring in the numbers of the system that's in place currently, and those numbers tell us that things are going in the wrong direction, Joe. I've got two opportunities in gold, and and you better jump on them. That, that's all I'm going to tell you because things got a lot worse today with these inflation numbers on top of the auction from yesterday that didn't go well, on top of now, I guess, the second of the seven legs, right? Uh, Meta having a huge, once again, huge, did you see Apple? You know, they had those those vision goggle things, whatever, you know, the virtual reality goggles. Yesterday they came out and said, I think, I don't even know, I think they're like three, four grand. I mean, something crazy. 50% reduction in what they thought they were going to sell. So uh, things are, are starting to really soften. iPhone sales in China down 20%. Uh, I don't know if the Magnificent 7 is, is, boy, if they start having problems, you'll see a lot more days like today, big down days in the markets. But I've got $20 gold pieces. Everybody can take advantage. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, volume structure this at all this may be i I mean i hope not but it probably maybe the last time you can buy twenty dollar gold pieces below twenty five hundred dollars two thousand four hundred ninety five dollars you got right gold right twenty three thirty five so again Close to spot here, $2,495, any quantity on $20 liberties. And then on the $5 liberties, once again, just like from yesterday, 1 through 19, 655, 20 or more at 650. So you got two different options here. You got the one ounce, you got the quarter ounce, all private gold pre-1933. And these are liberties. So, so even older than that. At eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two, and and Jason, just talking about the capital gains that the Biden administration is talking about. States like California, you'd almost have if you're the highest. Now this is for the highest earners. Fifty nine percent of your earnings would go to taxes. New Jersey, fifty five percent. Oregon, fifty four and a half. Minnesota. 54 and a half. New York, 53 and a half. I mean, Jason, this is idiotic type taxing, but this is, you know what? Everybody better get ready because I'm telling you right now, I think 2024 is still going to be kind of okay. It's the year of chaos. It gets bad in 2025. 2026, I don't think people are really paying attention. We're going to have a Medicare, Medicaid problem in 2026. And, and then, Jason, I think that's really when all hell breaks loose. I, I don't see how they're going to make things better when things continually are getting worse. That's, maybe this is what they can consider the soft landing. Is it's just going to continually get worse. Because, Joe, as you said, uh, there's, there's all these factors involved in, okay, 2024, you call it the year of chaos, which, yeah, it's, it's turning out to be pretty chaotic. But there's going to be a, uh, a result 
the problem is, is I don't think the result is like 2010, 2011 to 2012, where the Barack Obama administration was able, was able to inherit this sideways market where there was no GDP, no inflation, because the, the money they spent kind of just went to the banks and went to these countries to consolidate their losses. But that's not this time, is it, Joe? Especially with inflation. I think every time things get worse, it sets up another phase of getting worse. And that's, that could be year after year, Joe. 800-951-0592. I know you want to sit and watch, but you can't sit on your hands forever. Paper Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. A huge $20 savings. Uh, $20 gold sale saves $60 a coin. Everybody. Whether you buy one or a hundred. $20 liberties. liberties, the quarter ounce. 1 through 19, 655, 20 or more, 650 at 800, 951, 0592. Bloomberg now stating a close above 47 on the 10-year note. I hate to say it, will be a key technical level that will force a break to cycle highs of around 5%. Uh, and this is kind of where we're sitting here right now, the 10-year note, 471. Uh, the, the A lot of people really confused today with the GDP data, uh, a miss on the consumption side, a big miss at 1.6, and an even bigger miss on the inflation. Much hotter, in the wrong direction, right? They didn't miss to the weaker side, right, Jason? A lot hotter than analysts were expecting. Essentially, uh, somehow inflation doubled between the last quarter of 2023 and the first quarter of 2024, and all of a sudden now everybody's confused, right? Everybody uh, out there is like, oh, what does this mean? What, what, what's going to happen? Uh, and, and remember, this was a time when the government was, you know, we were every few weeks, oh, government shut down, government shut down. So the debt, Jason, the government number is going to get worse going forward now, which will probably help GDP in the second and third quarters. I think GDP will go up. But mostly because I think inflation is going to go up even more. So it, it, it's one of those weird things when you look at it. Yeah, GDP will be higher, but inflation is running so much hotter than GDP, yep. right? It, it, it's, it's like, well, look at all the earnings we've seen for most of these companies. What have they all really said? Well, we're selling less stuff. Outside of Chipotle, we're selling less stuff, but we're still making money. Right? We're selling less stuff, but we're raising prices enough that we're still making good money even though we're selling less stuff. And that's kind of what GDP looked like today. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things that, you know, I keep saying that inflation makes typical ways of looking at uh, finance, uh, it makes it difficult. If you, if you make $100 and you have to spend 80 of it, okay, then suddenly you make $120. Well, if you're spending 110 of it, you're not better off. But your GDP is up, right, Joe? Your GDP is up. So what? What, what really? Sh- sh- what they, what they, you know, this is a number they should have. That really, you know, that, that's what some of these inflation numbers pretend to have is what are the expense of these companies? You know, not not the not the the gross, not the net. What's just what's the plain expense? You know, if that's going up, it doesn't matter what sales are. If expense is going up uh, dramatically. That means it's going to be more expensive for everybody buying their products. That's that's the number that matters. I and mean, that's I think that's what up there, there's some of you guys are starting to see, Joe, because when you go to the supermarket, it's cheap, it's more expensive. You go to the restaurant, it's more expensive. Energy's starting to creep up every single month, and, and that's what matters the most is is uh, what it costs for you to run your daily life. You can't go off of a higher gross income of a of a company or of a country, Joe. It doesn't work that way if be, there's inflation. And again, I. I they, they, this, it's got to be the plan. 
Yeah, that's all I can say. I mean, the, the warnings are out there. These debt levels are so ridiculous. Uh, and now it, it's only going to get worse. My, my fear would be, uh, could you imagine a, a bad year for Wall Street? What that does to tax collections, right? Uh, right to make make the debts even worse, right? Could you imagine, right? Hey, uh, just the move. Think about this: the move from four and a half to five percent on a ten-year yield. That's a half of a point. Okay. Do you know that that move alone adds three hundred billion dollars to the national debt? Just that move. Now we move from four and a half. To, to almost four and three quarter, four and three quarters, right? Jason, that added about 150 billion dollars to the debt, just right there. Now they're saying, hey, we're probably going to five. Well, that, that's 300 billion, right? And then uh, uh, Wall Street, uh, these companies, hey, we're still making money, but we're making less. We're making less, but we're still making, but hey, they're paying less in taxes, right? Now all of a sudden, we just told you about Fitch is saying. We've got a bunch of cities, and by the way, the list is growing, they said, that may be forced to cut because they, they won't actually be able to borrow enough to cover their needs because the credit costs are going to be too expensive. Uh, it, it, it really is. This, this is a, a disaster. It's a slow-moving disaster that everybody can see. I'll, I'll just say this right now. The fact that every line isn't lit up here tells you that most people still don't get it. They don't see it coming. I remember the financial crisis. Nobody saw it coming. We were screaming bloody murder in the summer of 2007. Bye, bye, bye. And, and, and nobody, nobody saw it coming. And then but before the year was over, Lehman Brothers was, was out of business and Wall Street wasn't going to open without bank bailouts. I mean, that, that's how fast things happen, Jason. And uh, the small businesses are usually the ones that end up getting uh, shanked, so to speak, like right? Because yeah. think about it, after the inflation of the 70s and 80s, think about the 1980s. Look, think about all the different department stores, all the different choices you had to go shop back then, you know. And during the non-massive inflation of the last bunch of decades, how they've all evaporated, how inflation just destroyed a lot of companies. What's this inflation going to do, Joe? How many? How many... Those big companies talk about they can cut their margin, right? They can cut their margin, and they, and they can just soak up the business from these other failing smaller businesses. It's just, just it's going to happen in the banking markets, right? How many banks are going to be gone, Joe? All the, how many small banks? Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason wrapping up this Thursday. Like I said, twenty dollar gold pieces. They're not going to get cheaper than this. Two thousand four hundred ninety five dollars. Any quantity, five dollar liberties, one through nineteen, six hundred fifty five dollars, twenty or more, six fifty at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And man, I'll tell you what, I think there's going to be an explosion in commodity prices. Uh, BHP. They're already the largest miner in the world. Just made an offer, $39 billion for Anglo-American, which is like the, what, the seventh largest miner in the world. Uh, and it's all about copper, Jason, uh, saying that uh, they expect copper prices. Of course, copper's already really expensive uh, and, and BHP. Uh, I don't think, by the way, $39 billion won't get it done. This offer, I think, is going to go higher than that. Uh, but uh, they are uh, making a huge play here, uh, saying they expect uh, the world's power grids needing a major overhaul. Uh, electrification of the economy is going to unleash unprecedented, unprecedented demand in copper. And just like silver, gold. Copper, Jason, there's not enough mine supply for all of this demand. It's just that simple. There is not enough, Joe. There's definitely not enough. Watching copper going up, and this is a commodities uh, rally. It's not just a gold silver. We've said it many times. 
uh, a lot of these metals are found together too, right, Joe? That's one of those other things. You know, when you find oh, yeah, rhodium, you find product. palladium or platinum. So, right. so all these things are going up. And commodities are, you know, it could be lumber, it could be you know, food, you know, corn, wheat. Joe, when these commodities keep going up, it's going to make life very expensive. These are the thing. Commodities are the things that make the world run. You know that. I don't think well, I don't get why any of these these clowns in in uh, Wall Street I uh, don't understand. Maybe this is why there's a sell off today. Maybe some are starting to figure out. Wait a minute, uh, I don't think this inflation is stopping. So it's, maybe it's time for us to sell some positions, and maybe they're figuring it out. You know, hey, no rate reductions, and uh, this is a commodity. Maybe someone actually, hey, you know, all the com- it's not just gold and silver. Copper's going up. Wait a minute, food's going up. Tin, uh, yeah, cocoa. Coffee, right? Up. I mean, it, 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 the list just goes on and on. But this is this is a, a major uh, deal here because uh, kind of like the banks now, the miners. I mean, you're, we're talking about there's only a handful. You know, Anglo America is the seventh biggest, but it, it pales in comparison uh, to what BP is. You know, BP, uh, 149 billion market capitalization. Anglo's at 33 billion. I mean, so uh, it just tells you we got you know there's essentially BHP, Rio Tinto, uh, Glencore, I guess, and then you got uh, the Chinese mining group, and then after that, Jason, it, it, it gets pretty sparse. There's not a lot of major miners because they bought everything up, kind of like the big banks now. Uh, all this production in the hands of very few. Yeah, well, and I just mentioned that a little bit ago, didn't I? That you know, you know, the inflative cycles can can uh, bully out the smaller players and enjoy. It. All you have to do is drive around your town and see how, how some places seem really busy and other places just aren't cutting it, are they, Joe? There's gonna be a, there's gonna be a lot of blood in the street, uh, so to speak, financially as as this thing gets worse. I agree with you. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Three-star general, Michael J. Flynn, head of the Pentagon Intelligence Agency, knew all the government's dirty secrets. He was one of the most respected generals in the military. Flynn knew what the intel world had been up to. He understood its funding. He ordered the first audit of the use of contractors. This set off alarm bells. The explosive new documentary, Flynn, deliver the truth, whatever the cost, and covers the facts behind this scandal. Flynn told the truth. He was the most dangerous person for Donald Trump to hire. I find out the worst enemy that I'm going to face in my life is right here in America. They took my assessment and they wanted me to change it. I was like, I'm not changing it. They had to get rid of Flynn. With in-depth interviews, archival footage, and never-before-seen personal records of the man behind the headlines. I just felt like I was drowning. Flynn, deliver the truth, whatever the cost. Available now. Watch it today. Go to salemnow.com, salemnow.com.